Okay. Shabana Azmi, Terry and Anku, wonderful to see you. And uh, Shabana, ma'am, like I said, off the mic to you. I'm missing the vast expanse of the Kandala house. But this is a nice <laughs> cozy home that you have in Mumbai. Is this now the official work home? And that is the real home? Or what is it? That, that's what we're trying. That's what we're trying. We haven't quite succeeded. But I hope we get there soon. Hmm. I'm going to start with you, Terry. I find I find that this film and another short film of yours that I've seen, which is Kunjo, are both based mm -hmm. in rural India, in the Pind, as it were. Uh, why this fascination for the village milieu? It's not so much a fascination. This is actually, you know, the village. So Kunjo, which you saw, that's my family's village. The home is my home that I grew up in, actually my Masi. One of my masis, she's in it. Actually, a lot of my family is in the film. We made it as a, a together. So, um, and then, you know, Kalikuhi, I guess you could say is almost an offshoot of, uh, you know, these family stories that I grew up with, these ghost stories. And then, you know, coupled with, um, you know, the social injustice of gender violence and female infanticide and feticide, along with, you know, the way that I was raised. My mother is a Punjabi writer and poet, you know, also things that have happened, you know, in my family, girls in the village. So, you know, through, you know, uh, my anger and rage over the injustice, my way of, of, of dealing with that is channeling it through the character of Shivangi. And through storytelling, I'm a storyteller. And so it's it's my vehicle. Um, and of course, you know, the village is, is honestly what I know and what I'm interested in. And uh, these two are, are actually very close to home for me. Mm -hmm. Shabanaji, everybody just keeps talking about Makri and Makri and Makri. But I know that there was, a, there was a fantasy film for kids a few years ago called The Wishing Tree, Kalpviksh. Uh, but horror-wise, nothing. You must enjoy this, you know, the fantasy element, children. Uh, it always makes for a nice setting for an actress of your, your caliber. I love, I love uh, children. And I find it quite amazing that uh, when Makri was made, I had, you know, hordes of children come into my house tentatively quite relieved that I don't look like Makari in real life, but totally fascinated. I don't know what it is about children that they get fascinated with something that they are also afraid of. And I uh, I mean, the number of people who are now grown up and keep telling me about Masu, which was when they were kids. And I said, but I was so horrid to the child, but it's something that just stays with them. I love working with uh, kids also. And in this particular film, to work with the uh, Riva and Rose was just absolutely fascinating. It's good, no, to be able to appeal to all um, all sections of society, and there's something so so innocent and uh, wonderful about children. They can be very tough mm. to work with, huh? With working with children and animals can be very very tough, but if you make it, then it's fine. Riva is just unbelievable. Yeah. She's a total pro. I mean, I just cannot believe both Rose and Riva. They had such tough physical scenes to do at two o'clock in the morning and they were all there. I mean, really, hats off to them. You know, Konkana tells this story about how after doing Diane with Vishal and Abhishek, yeah. when she goes into Harun's school to pick him up or drop him, the children are just staring at her <laughs> without even blinking an eyelid, <laughs> thinking the hair is going to stand on end and things like that. So the things that actresses have to go through. Uh, so, so, Anku, uh, lots of reckies before finalizing the location or did Terry just say, this is it, pe kaam karte hai. so this village looks lovely. No, they were reckies because, uh, I mean, if you see, I mean, you've seen the film, you know what the story is yeah. about and our specifications, Terry specifications in terms of the room, the courtyard, the lanes and all of that. And so we needed a village that was completely supportive of what we wanted to do. So there were a number of reckies uh, before um, we finalized on this particular village. 
and um, this village was very cooperative i mean they they were very cooperative each and every person and in fact they started cooking for us they wanted to feed us and we were like no let us <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was so yeah it did um, we and this village i think is very very used to a lot of shoots happening there so finally settled down in this village and um, uh, i think terry you went on two rekis right uh, yeah so i mean yeah so and our crew went on two three rekis so finally yeah, we zero down on this which and, and it's in, it's in the punjab it's in punjab punjab right at the border i mean we we, we uh, were right next to the uh, fence india pakistan wow and central it was right there so very fascinating in that sense terry we don't get to see sanjeeda a lot in cinema i mean uh, It's so sad. She's a bona fide star in television. Well, I'm so glad you cast her. Was she your first choice up front, Sanjida Sheikh? Tell us about that. Um, yes, you know we have an incredible casting director. So you know the casting director read the screenplay, um, Adore and she, Adore Mukherjee, and she, you know, suggested Sanjida, and I absolutely fell in love with her. You know, it's interesting as a director. Uh, you know. A big part of my job is each actor works differently. The way that Sanjeeva works is very different, and she is such a natural. She has a very specific way of working, and what she brought to the character is something that I couldn't have envisioned. You know, I had a very specific thing that I wanted, and of course, she gave that. But then also, what she infused it with was this naturalness. and actually sanjeeva i didn't realize that she actually works a lot in punjabi cinema so she felt very comfortable going there she 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 fit right in um but you know i didn't know i mean i knew that she had a history with um television and she's a very well known tv star but it shocks me that she is not cast more and i really hope she is actually you know we ha- she has two films coming out this week which nice. i think is phenomenal and um yeah she's she's amazing and lovely and i feel very lucky to have worked with her shabana ma'am i remember when leela samson ji had become chairperson of the censor board in 2011 uh you know you would put out a tweet saying you were happy at her opening remarks in a seminar and you know here you are in a film with her have you interacted before do you know each other you're such legends in your respective spheres no we know each other we know of each other and we've interacted uh, before but obviously during the shooting of this film we got to know each other uh, better because we would have breakfast uh, together and uh, really i remember that when she made those opening remarks as chairperson of the cbfc i felt so good because i said here is an artist who understands and has made a speech that i would have liked to speech she's seeing it so much from the uh, point of view of the of the artist um she has taken to acting after a i mean this is suddenly that has come her way i think she's done not another that she is so convincing in the uh, film we really didn't have any scenes together as such but it's always great to be around people that you like and enjoy being with uh, uncle let, let's talk about the little girl who plays shivangi uh, oh. shabana ji just talked a little bit about that but you know uh, where did you find her such a splendid job uh, take me through the details so we saw odi i mean aditya is this thing so we saw that and i called adi and i said adi i am in love with this little girl who is this and um, and it's so interesting because i had just put the phone down and uh, adar called me and she says i've got just read the script i've got the right girl for you i know you're not going to say no i i know terry is going to love her and there was reeva and no brainer you see i mean she is just so amazing and the stamina the um, the way she gets into character what she does she all of us were like completely taken in by her completely i mean she i mean shabana ma'am i remember you telling her that when you do your first film i want to be around and we were like we want to be around when you do your first film as a lead lead we want to be there to see that happen she, yeah she is amazing so they, that was completely a no brainer i mean terry saw her audition and she was like of course i mean this this she is shabana and then we wanted her to cut terry wanted her to cut her hair in a specific way again no fuss nothing it was so hot in um, punjab we were shooting peak summer 
and um, not one complaint. I mean, in fact, we would fuss over her and uh, to the extent where Raman would carry her on his back from location to the base for meals and everything. He was like, you're not going to walk. The kids weren't allowed to walk. They were carried on our backs from there to see. He was completely with the crew, with the whole call. I mean, the conditions we were shooting in, not air conditioned studios or rooms or anything like that. It was in the middle of the village with muck and flies and the heat and everything. And the, she didn't complain. She was focused. It was amazing. I mean, that's, I don't, I mean, that's just something else. And when Shabana Azmi says that about a child saying, I want to be around when you see your first film, things like that, it's a good omen. I mean, look yeah. at Urmila's career. Look at, I was telling Shweta Basu Prasad, is there a web series you're not in? <laughs> because she seems to be in everything. And Shweta, 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 exactly. When I did Makri, I was absolutely certain that Shweta would have a very good career ahead of her. Lovely. There's something about these girls. Yeah, yeah. Terry, this film is not a period piece. It's actually set in modern day India. But it talks of this this ancient curse. You're obviously very moved by female infanticide. You, you spoke a, a little bit of it on the top. All of us are. Uh, is there an attempt to shine a light on, on this horrible practice? And, you know, are you hoping to achieve that? I know that cinema is largely an entertainment medium. But it interests me that, you know, some kind of social causes come up in movies like yours. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, you know, cinema is a entertaining, but entertainment can also be used for social causes and to give a voice to something. That's the kind of cinema and storytelling that I'm interested in. You know, I look at something like um, Guillermo del Toro's Devil's Backbone, you know, or Pan's Labyrinth. It's set within the Civil War. He's talking about the Civil War. He's talking about fascism, but he's using... Uh, lyricism, he's using fantasy, he's using fairy tales. And, you know, my, um, I, uh, you know, I hope to achieve the same things. For me, the personal is political. My work will always have some sort of social meaning. And, you know, you can do that through comedy. You can do that through, you know, romance. You can do it many different ways. I like um, this kind of darker undercurrent of genre. I'm interested in it. And uh, of course, this is a subject that I care deeply about. Hmm. Uh, Shabana ji, this, this Mossy, this lady you play, what is it that you found striking about her that you agreed to do this? Well, I felt that she was very burdened by a dark secret that she had held in her heart for many, many years. And uh, that there was a certain heaviness in her because of the burden of this secret. And so it should be reflected in everything, in her voice, in her, in her walk, in, um, in that sudden moment when I felt that maybe I should just join the eyebrows together because not only would it create a different look, but it would also suggest somewhere maybe that this woman doesn't care about the way she looks. She, she, what she is a personification of that guilt. And that I thought was an interesting character to play, apart from the fact that I feel very strongly about uh, female feticide. Mm, very beautifully put. Ankur, uh, Leela Samson normally does only films in the South. In fact, the only Hindi film she did, I think, was a remake of a Mani Ratnam film in which she was there in the Tamil original in any case. Uh, I think, you know, then Shad got her to uh, to do the Hindi also. Uh, so was it difficult to get her on board? Uh, you know, because when, when people start second careers late on, like, you know, Baman, for example, after photography, getting into acting, they come a new set of challenges. Baman says initially used to be very nervous, you know. Uh, but with Leela, ma'am, was it easy to, to get her on board and get her to do this? You know, I like I said this earlier, the strip is so well written, Rishi. It we didn't hear a no from anyone. So everyone on that film was our first choice. And um, I think we just reached out to people who, uh, who wanted to be a part of sending this message out. I mean, when, um, when I read the script, my first thing was that our people attached to this should be strong women who are confident and who are not just confident, I mean, who 
fearlessly will talk about this social evil. I mean, it's it shouldn't be just ki ek role kia or khatam ho gayi baat and we've gone on to other sets and done our other stuff. There should be people like if when Shabana Ma'am talks about it, it's more than the film. Like I mean, when she talks about uh, female infanticide, when she talks about all of this, it's beyond the film. It's beyond the role that she's doing. So I mean, now and so Leela Ma'am came in with that thought too. Uh, and so we said we want more and more women attached to this who people will listen to when they go out there and talk about this so it's, it's just it's not just promotion for a movie this is more than that and um, and it wasn't a movie. she read the script and she was immediately on board and I, I yeah I don't think it was um, it wasn't at all any kind of reservation from her end to a Hindi film and all Terry, I like the tone of the film. I mean, it's not completely black and dark. In horror films, that's what happens. I mean, you just completely darken it. Uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful tone to it. What is your brief to Sejal, your, your cinematographer? You know, Sejal and I, we came to an understanding pretty quickly on. He and I uh, like the same kind of cinematography. When I explained things to him, he got it right away. He was very passionate about it. You know, Sejal doesn't always say yes to films. He's, he is through and through a true artist. And so he has no problem with saying no. He only says yes to something if he feels deeply connected and passionate and knows that he's gonna bring his magic to it. And I fully trusted him. And as far as a brief, you know, I told him I wanted it to be moody. Um, I said, the most important thing to me is that we're using cinematic language to tell the story. That's the most important thing. I'm not here to lecture anybody. I'm not interested in telling the audience how to feel or to just disseminate a bunch of information. First and foremost is for the audience that's giving me generously you know, their time. So it's my job to take them on this journey using the language of cinema. So we have this script that we've written, but it's just the blueprint for this visual medium. So Sejal and I had to be exactly on the same page and he got that right away. I said, I want the film to be moody. I want it to be dark. And you know, it's interesting what you said. You said, it's not a period piece. It's set in modern times, but what we you know, set out to achieve, which I believe we did is to give it this timeless classic feel like if you notice there's no cell phones there's no indicators of you know a product um it's very classic and i wanted it to have that and he you know he loves like classic italian cinema classic iranian cinema so we were drawing from lots of traditions i love korean horror films um and so we just kind of had these you know we, we went in with the same thinking and idea. So what we created on set, um, you know, was this magic. I love the cinematography and, you know, hats off to him. He's, he's phenomenal. Terry, your research actually shows that this is, this is what used to happen. The, the village, uh, the matriarchs used to take the child and, you know, uh, and then throw the child in the, in the well. And that's really shocking. Or is that your interpretation of, of events? Yeah, so, you know, this is a fairy tale. We're using mm. allegory, we're using cinematic language. Sure. And of course, I'm definitely drawing on um, horrors that have happened, um, stories that I have been told, gender violence that, um, you know, uh, familial, personal things that have happened. There's a whole bunch of things that I'm working from and drawing from, but uh, this isn't a documentary and it's not um, exactly yeah. word per word. You know, and I think that that actually makes it more powerful. And it was also my intention to create a space where the audience and the viewer, the person that's going on this journey, they bring themselves to it. Creating space for, you know, anybody watching it at the end or through it to say, okay, I can understand how this is, that I, I can bring myself to this. At the end, it's posing a question, you know, are you going to claim your life are you going to claim your agency? It, it draws on a bigger question. Shabana ji, you gave us a bit of a scare with that accident. I'm just so happy you're back. We get to see lots and lots and lots of movies from you as an undying fan of yours. But uh, you know, what is the, the mood in the, in the film business amongst the actors? I mean, slowly people are getting back to work. They're getting back on set. Um, your thoughts on that? 
Are protocols all being taken care of? I mean, treat this as a social service announcement. I mean, what are you hearing well, from your colleagues the thing is, about going I back? Start, uh, I went back on set on the 7th of uh, September for Nikhil Advani's project. And uh, <clears throat> my God, it was very strange to me, very anachronistic, because uh, it's a period piece that I'm doing. And everybody was in PPE suit. So I felt I was in a sci-fi film. And it, it couldn't be far removed from that. But so much care is being right. taken. So much care in uh, terms of everybody wearing PPE suits, then sanitizers, masks, etc. Even after the shot, the masks are put on, which means more work for the poor uh, makeup people. But, you know, for the initial um, hesitation, uh, apprehension, Within an hour, I was back like a pro on the set and everything else didn't matter because because your adrenaline starts flowing and you're so happy to be back in front of the camera. Of course, which means that necessary precautions have to be taken, but life has to go on, right? True that. Uh, interviews should be you know, the right... Tabu, let me tell you about Tabu, my niece. Uh, she rang me up and she said, you've started shooting. I said, yes. She's saying, you belong to another world. You had an accident and 40 days later, you were shooting abroad. What are you doing? I said, but it's fine. She said, I think the vaccine is growing from inside your guts. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, wow, That's so I don't know how to learn from you. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Ladies, interviews should be the right size before the guests start getting bored. So I'm going to say bye-bye to you. <laughs> Thank you for a lovely movie. I thoroughly enjoyed Kali Kui. I'm going to be, I'm going to try and champion this film and tell as many people to watch it. Uh, because, you know, it's just, just wonderful, this world that you've created and you've executed, Shavanaji. Thank you, Anku. Thank you, uh, Terry. Thank and you. Thank you, Shavanaji. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye.